Okay, next is Emil who will tell about the situation in Austria. So hello, I'm Emil and I'm going to tell you about the situation of agrobiodiversity in Austria. And for this purpose I've chosen three examples of diversity products from uh, genetic resources. So there's uh, colorful pickled tomatoes from selection of cocktail and wild varieties, a traditional rye bread from a uh, land race, and fresh, fresh plums from also from a land race. And so what are the factors of success for such products? Um, these products have to be enabled in all steps of the value chain. So first the seeding and propagating material has to be available. Then the hygiene requirements on farms have to be appropriate so that it's easy to produce uh, such products for farmers. And then there, it's also important to have an entrepreneurship friendly environment and that the farmers don't have to focus all the time on bureaucracy. And we think um, the use and conservation of genetic resources should also be rewarded. So there should be financial aids for this purpose. So I'm going to check the following legal matters in Austria on their compatibility with agrobiodiversity. And the biodiversity traffic light is going to show us with which legal matters are bad for agrobiodiversity could be better or are best practice examples. The framework for all these legal matters are EU directives and EU regulations and the conservation of plant genetic resources are in, within the scope of the international treaties uh, CPD and ITPGR. So let's start with Austrian seed legislation. We already heard uh, from Merete a lot of, about seed legislation already. So for a farmer, there are basically three ways to um, get the seeds. So he can use his own seed. He saves it, saves it from the last year's harvest. He can exchange it from a farmer or he can uh, buy it on the market. And Austria has also implemented the EU directives on amateur and conservation varieties. So farm safe seed in Austria is exempted from seed legislation, from seed marketing legislation, and reseeding seeding fee for registered varieties are not uh, accepted politically. And uh, the seed exchange between farmers and seed users at the, uh, aimed at the protection of plant genetic resources is allowed. This is just true for not registered varieties, and since 2016, it is also defined that it's possible to exchange against money. Um, the exchange is just possible when uh, the person is no dealer in seed, so he cannot at the same time offer um, registered US varieties. And um, for the exchange, quant quantity limitations apply that are listed in the in the annex of this law, but the uh, these quantity limitations are enough to uh, start uh, produ uh, agricultural production. Basically, um, the legislation for amateur varieties is like that. So there are technical re requirements, but they are very low. There is not of no official tested re testing required if there's a sufficient description available or the re results of a not official testing. But the trade with um, amateur varieties is uh, limited to these very small packages. So this is very unpractically for farmers. The conservation varieties have to undergo a DUS test, but with the lowest requirement. And like Denmark, Austria has also decided to have whole Austria as one region of origin. So for example, the seeds for this rye variety can be sold over Austria. 
My conclusions on Austrian seed marketing legislation uh, is that the situation for f in the field of pharma to pharma is very good. It's possible for farmers to get seed. In the field of private end users, the Danish um, the Danish solution is better because it's not regulated for private end users. Um, one big problem in Austrian legislation is uh, the conservation of fruit tree varieties. This is due to a very strict um, legislation. For example, here I have uh, a passage from the Law Austrian Plant Protection Regulation, which says that propagating material has to derive from plants which are officially investigated and free from pathogens. And when you have a fruit tree in the garden, it is basically not possible that there are no pathogens on this plant. The effect of this, this is that propagating material for old varieties is very hard to get. There are no cutting gardens in Austria. Germany says, uh, German producers say that uh, Austrian uh, plant protection regulation is too strict, so they don't deliver science. And the gene bank does not offer science anymore. Uh, the variety would probably be available in a private garden, but then the private person has to be has to register as a supplier. And then the plant protection service can come and check his um, orchard. And if they found, find some uh, pathogens, some dangerous pathogens, they could uproot his orchard. Um, the hygiene requirements for farmers are in many cases the same for industri industry and for farmers. But there are some exceptions for direct marketing, for small amounts and for certain foods like vegetables. Uh, this does not, uh, there are no exceptions for big animal species. So there in, for big animal species, there are exactly the same uh, regulations as for industry. And then in our opinion, is it, it is also necessary that um, the farmers can be successful entrepreneurs and they don't have to focus on, on bookkeeping. And in Austria there um, is a very special concept of taxing farms. So it's not based on the market value, but it's based on a so-called unit value, which represents the situation or the potential of the farm. So there's um, factors like climate, location, and size, and it's always a lot lower than the market value. And on, based on this, the taxation, um, the taxation is based on the, this unit value, and if the unit value is lower than uh, 75,000 euros, as a turnover is lower than 400,000 euros, there's a very simple way for farmers to calculate their taxes. The income tax is just calculated at, on base of this unit value. They don't have to pay turnover tax and they're exempted from the obligatory cash register. The result of this is that the farmers can focus on farming. Um, let's come to the subsidies. So there's uh, subsidy, subsidies in the Austri Austrian Agri-Environmental Program, which is part of the measures of the second column of common agricultural policy. And there are subsidies for rare agri agricultural plants. There's a list of conservation varieties, which are uh, which make the farmers get this payment. The improvement that could be done is that there is no payment for fruit trees and vegetable varieties. There is as well the subsidy for endangered livestock breeds, for, but just for big animal species. 
Uh, general biodiversity in agroecosystems agro is uh, supported by the subsidizing cover crops where the level of funding is depending on the seed mixture so the more flowering plants are in the seed mixture the higher will be the payment and there's also general subsidy for flower crops so as you've seen there are some parts quite good in Austrian legislation and some parts can be improved what uh, definitely should be done is to be improve the plant health legislation So um, this biodiversity traffic light can also be understood as a barrier for these products to enter the biodiversity market. And the biodiversity market in Austria is steadily growing. It has about a few hundred hectares already. And the uh, turnover can be estimated at about 50 million euros annually. Now we are going to have a coffee break until 11 and I've prepared some uh, gingerbread from this conservation variety for you to taste and eat it to your coffee. <laughs> Thank you.